Hi, my name is Eddie Williams. Um, John Edward Francois Williams, but you can call me Eddie. I've been involved with Koinonia for 25 years, uh, forever young as we say, and born and bred in Paul. My interesting story will include the adventures of how Radio Casey was born, but very specifically the relationship between Radio Casey as a sister company to the mother organization, Koinonia. For those who may not know, the KC in Koinonia stands, or the KC in Radio KC stands for Koinonia Radio. 25 years ago, I met a certain gentleman called Alan Klute. Big ups to Auntie Belinda for not allowing me to go and leave a house. And after many cups of coffee, eventually I met Harlan. Um, back in the days, I used to work at an organization or an institution called Val Sharon School for Girls. It's a school of industry. And in the old dispensation, we used to call it Bavar School. People refer to it as institutions where you would place children that society didn't know what to do with. Back then, I discovered this passion that I really, really wanted to work with young people, especially those who said that they cannot express themselves. Uh, part of that is also in the Koinonia and Radio Casey story, because even what we do today is we try and tell stories for, on behalf of, and allow space for others to tell the stories that no one ever listens to. So this story is a wonderful journey. It started on the stupa many, many years ago. Those who don't know the stupa, it's called also the island, but it's in Kleindrakenstein weg. Um, Kleindrakenstein is where we used to grow up as youngsters. We used to hang out. It's all in Pal East, and it had a culture and an environment all of itself. Those who can still identify with the story still remembers old Mr. Mac, the Planet Biscope, uh, the hotel. Um, those who can still remember, remember Elite and Centerpoint and old Mr. Witten and then he sold the, the business to Mr. Gafur. So Mr. Gaff and Koinonia and all of the family on the stupa became synonymous with a culture of sharing and a beautiful story really of people wanting to come together. 25 years ago, after Koinonia was born, we moved into Ivanhoe Park, number 10. It was a small little office, much like the studio you see now, a little bit bigger, but in faith we called it a youth center. People would obviously mock us and say, ah, wawel, jelewees, and this and this and this, but I knew this was a calling, and we knew it was a matter of time that most of us, that believed in this calling would do what all of us eventually knew we would do and that was to leave our day jobs and pursue this dream and passion full time. We even had a, a saying back then, you cannot do something part time that you dream of doing full time. Um, so back in the days when we met Brother Allen and Fico and um, Essie and Terence and so many other beautiful dynamic people we said, how are we going to change this valley? Remember, we are now going back in 1993. It's at the dawn of our democracy, asking the question that many other youngsters didn't ask at that moment. What's our role? What's our function? What are we here for? How are we going to change this world? We as young, dynamic Christian leaders within our churches, within our organization, what is about to happen? Back then, I also used to belong to another organization called Youth of Flame. And... As an interdominational youth movement, we came together and we shared ideas. And then Koinonia also had fellowship where youngsters came together, um, specific evenings, Thursday evenings, Tuesday evenings, at the Annunciation. And we had, on occasion, 100, 100 plus youngsters just coming together, sharing stories and sharing their lives together. I know at one of those meetings, we also discussed the possibility of reaching out and changing the world. Long story short, after a few years, four years in fact, we had this discussion, okay now, what and who and where and so on and so forth. The idea of radio broadcasting came up. Radio Casey was really born on the beach reaches, 
where we did outreach during the December holidays on the beaches and we played with music and sound. I remember one day specifically, people would come and want to bring fursukis. They had their own little dedications that they wanted to share with other loved ones on the beaches. Back then we were still on um, Diaz Beach that is now privatized, but back then we would have our big speakers up and there would be youngsters playing sports, there would be other youngsters busy with poikikos competitions and stuff and the campus would come and say, can we please tell a story? Can we please give an announcement? Can we please say to whoever is staying at that plot, we think of them and they must challenge us in the cricket or they must come and visit us. And we said, man, isn't this amazing how people just love to hear their voices, hear their stories, but also just to interact. And we came home, long story short, through prayer and through many, many hours of discussions and deliberations, the idea of Radio Casey was born. I can still remember and I still have the smell in my nostrils how we used to work very hard because now we had to make a dream a reality. We had to go and sell the idea, sell it to adults that did not see what we were necessarily seeing. And remember out of the hundreds of people we would speak to, only one or two per meeting would come forward and say, I'm interested in this. Can we take it along? I still remember we borrowed so many things and favors and resources from friends and families because we didn't have our own infrastructure. We only had this one little office. Big ups to the PAL advice office. Then um, Prof. Turok that came to us and said, you know, you can have this extra space and this is where you can start Radio Casey from. So our first studio was built on the stupa, similar like the second studio and indeed this is where Radio Casey was born, on the stupa, there by Ivano Park, with ordinary people submitting their dreams and their wills, wanting to serve people for a better generation.